I don't. It feels like I should do like a welcome to, and I, but I don't have like a whatever. I'm just gonna. Yeah. No, that's I'll do, okay. a, I'll do a little welcoming thing, and then. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't rehearse this at all. <laughs> Neither did I. All right, hello everybody, and welcome to the first ever video newsletter for the 3D Artist newsletter on Substack. I'm very happy today to be joined by Nikki Monteleone. Uh, Nikki is an incredible 3D artist who I have admired for a long time and now have the pleasure of working with at Substance at Adobe. Uh, Nikki has worked for a bunch of companies and a bunch of projects you've probably seen. She's been at DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, uh, How Special. Um, Nikki originally was a graphic designer before getting into 3D. Uh, she also worked at Leica. That was the one that I was missing off the top of my head. Um, most recently, she also designed the chameleon character if you've ever used substance painter before that i believe was in like 2018 is that right nikki that you designed the splash screen for 18 yeah 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 i think so it's one yeah. of my all-time favorite character projects i've ever seen i'm uh thrilled to be able to work with her uh, i talk to her all the time but uh welcome to this impromptu podcast from my backyard nikki how are you yeah thank you i'm fantastic it's uh it's hot down here in la already so yeah. um yeah, I I have the pleasure of wearing t-shirt today. Yeah, you said about it. Uh, Nikki is, uh, and and her arms are joining us today. That's awesome. Yeah, All yeah, right, cool. So the reason why I wanted to have Nikki on is uh, we were together at GDC working the Substance booth and both doing some portfolio reviews, and we were having some really fantastic discussions about the portfolio review process and some advice that we can have for people. And then Nikki, being as brilliant as she is, condensed it down into a lovely uh, Twitter thread of 10 pieces of advice that she would give somebody for putting together their demo reel. And there was great nuggets in there, but Twitter does this thing where it limits all of your ideas down to digestible snippets. So I wanted to take a moment to kind of go through all of these with her to elaborate on them and kind of talk more robustly about them. Because I think there are some fantastic, fantastic points in here. And the first one, I mean, you came out of the gate hot with my favorite one, which is something that we discussed there and something that you gave advice to uh, one of the students, which was number one, own your work, put your name on everything you did. You cre If you create it at all, note that somewhere obvious, uh, it won't be assumed. Nikki, can you kind of talk through that? Like what, like, like you, it's very definitive yeah. language. You're like, own your stuff. What yeah. do you mean by that? So I feel like I've seen, I've seen a lot of portfolios where, okay, you want to be a texture artist and you show me your texture work and you want to be a modeler and you show me your modeling work. But if you've done more than what you're applying for, that is priceless. So own everything that you've done. If you designed it and you modeled it and you textured it, a little tiny blurb down at the bottom, responsible for all. That's all I need to see to say, oh my God, uh, okay, you're you're coming in for a modeling position, but what's really amazing about you is you know a little bit more about the pipeline. You know what comes before you, you know what comes after you. That to me is like, I can't, I don't have time to train in that kind of stuff. I can only train you in the stuff that like is your job. Uh, but if you already know those things, that's just, it, it's priceless to, to understand and know like all of it. And then also like, oh my gosh, how badass are you if you did everything? Like own it and be confident about it and and like say, this is my this is my work. I made all of this, and and be proud of it. So that's that's like maybe the most important part of it is to be proud of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because because for you, it's obvious. Like you did it, and sometimes you forget when you're putting together your demo reel or your portfolio that it may not be obvious to the audience. And you you know, lots of people are humble. They're 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 they don't want to like bang you know beat their own you know bang their own chests and. And, and and scream their names from the rooftops or anything, but you kind of have to with this stuff. You want to make you sure that, to. yeah, that you're given the credit that you deserve. That's great. Yep, for sure. All right. Uh, the, no, yeah. Yeah. Two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Uh, this one, okay. So I, it's, this is a quote around something that somebody would say, I don't have a job to create the work and don't have the work to get the job. So seek out collaborations, head over to Instagram or ArtStation and find artists willing to let you use their designs and models to sculpt or texture. And then you have a snippet at the end that says, and always, all caps, ask for permission. So I have two questions about this. One, I want you to elaborate a little more on, um, like, kind of talk through 
um, how you would look for those collaborations. And two, anytime I see these and always ask for permission, anything like that, it's like, don't use the hairdryer in the bathtub. And I was like, wait a second. Who used the hairdryer in the bathtub? Like whatever, they say, like whatever. It's like the warning, like don't, you know, don't wash your feet in the sink. You're like, there's a story there. So I want to, I want to ask about the process and see uh, a time that that not asking permission has been problematic. Totally. Um, okay, so this one for me personally might be the most important thing that that I found uh, as I was kind of like you know, a little bit like young in the industry or not young, but like my beginning out in this industry. Um, so this was a career change for me. Um, I didn't go to school. I didn't have like a fancy reel afterward. I you know, I went to school for fashion. Uh, I didn't use it at all. I mean, I used the core things that I learned there, color theory, composition, all, you know, all the, all the stuff that I believe is really good to learn at school. Um, but so I, I realized that I like this stuff like kind of later in life and I went back to school, but it was continuing education and um, the work that I got from that, those couple of classes were not portfolio worthy. Like they were not getting me a job in New York City, like up against these kids that are coming out of, you know, a full degree from SVA or Pratt or wherever. Um, so for me, I'm like, all right, I, I need to figure out what to do, but it's a catch-22. I can't get the job because I don't have the reel, and then I can't make a reel because I don't have the professional work. So I found this uh, this website. It was Artella, and I don't think that maybe they're around still, but I think you might need to pay for it now. But I found this, um, this short that I joined, and I worked on it for a couple of months, maybe even like a year. And at the end of the day, I was like really proud of it. And I got to meet a bunch of people who a lot of them I still am friends with today. And actually, one of them I hired to work on Star Trek with me. And he is amazing. Uh, you know, we, we still keep in touch over all these years. So like the network of people that I got just from doing that little short was was priceless. Um, so that was, you know, that was one thing to help me build my portfolio. And yes, I did it for free, but... Um, I know I'll never tell anybody to do it, to do stuff for free. But if it's something that where, you know, you have a job, maybe you don't like doing that stuff. This can be something that you do uh, in your downtime just to build your portfolio. Um, so the the second second part of that is I did head to Instagram and I did find someone's piece who uh, he said he modeled it and he said it was his. And I textured it and it was this skater chick and it was like, oh my God, I loved it. It was beautiful. It was crazy. Like I wanted to texture it so bad. I did the groom and I actually had to like retop it all too. So I got to kind of brag about the wireframe. And at the end of the day, um, yeah, that was not his. Uh, and I got this crazy message from somebody who's very well known. And like, I'm not going to get into like who and what I don't want to, you know, embarrass anybody but it was not his um to give me uh it was it was an illustration by somebody who's insanely talented and i respect uh, a ton and i don't know all i could do is apologize and learn from that like all that's all i could do i was like i'm really sorry if you want me to take it down like i absolutely will like there it was it was a whole thing and so just going forward it takes it takes two minutes to like D DM someone on Instagram or even like if you think they're not going to see your DM, go Google their uh, Gmail or whatever it is and email them a personal thing saying how much you love it and how much it would mean to you if you could just model it or if you could texture it or light it or whatever it is you want to do. It takes two seconds to do that. Um, and honestly, like most artists are amazing people and they're going to be super humbled by the fact that like someone even wants to model their design or someone wants to texture their character or like the, I, I haven't run into a situation yet where I've reached out to someone and they're like, no, you can't do it. The only time I did is when I didn't ask permission. And I assumed that this guy was giving me something that um, was his and it wasn't. And it was actually pitch for a professional thing and yeah it was a whole thing so so uh yeah don't not ask for permission ever learn from my yeah. mistakes <laughs> yeah and people and like and to, to reiterate what nikki said yeah totally people are kind in our industry they're um 
they are they are grateful when people are are appreciating their work and, and using it and what they are doing and like they just they just want to see more and more of it. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Let's moving on to number three. Yeah. Uh, and I love this one. So this is something one I never did until much later in life. Uh, but it's create the work you want to get paid for. It's great to show a few styles, but cater your portfolio to what would make you happy doing it every day. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. that's like I don't know. Right. I I don't know how much more I need to elaborate on this one. Um, yeah. I, obviously, we need to pay the rent, mortgage, whatever you have. You need you need to be able to to make a living to eat. Um, but I I did this too. I was a generalist when I first started and I was doing everything. I was creating entire shots by myself. I would get footage uh, from, um, you know, the producer or whoever, and he'd be like, all right, add all the CG to this. And then there was a compositor at the end of the day that would take it and, and take it off. So it was like modeling, texturing, animating, rigging, light, like all of it. Uh, and there's, some you know uh, weird people out there like doing all that stuff like like kudos to you if that's something that you want to do but um i did losing my mind a little bit and i had a background already like i went to art school like i i liked painting i like drawing and so like becoming a texture artist look development artist that just kind of is where i gravitated towards and going back to number two like I just started to cater my portfolio to the thing that did it for me. I was like, nah, I like making eye candy. I like putting paint on grayscale models. Like, this is what I want to do. So um, I think I probably did jobs to pay the rent. I mean, like, man, I made a casino commercial that used probably every single, <laughs> like, taboo filter in After Effects. But I was really proud of that thing. And I learned a lot. Like, it forced I mean, to learn a lot of things while he was making it to pay the rent. But at the same time, I was, yeah, I'm like super passionate about this. This is what I really like to do. So in my off hours, I was catering my portfolio to the thing that I eventually was able to get into because, uh, you know, again, I didn't really have the time in school to to figure this stuff out for myself. So I had to really work like over time after the fact uh, to to get here. So, yeah. I mean, create the work you want to get paid for. Like, I, I'm, I don't know. I still have, what, 25 more years left of life where I have to work. So, kind of mind-boggling to even think about. And for how long I've been doing it, I still have another <laughs> couple decades. It's really hard to wrap your mind around the longevity of your career early when you're younger. Because yeah. you're, like, you know, 22. And high school was four years. College was four years. Like, whatever your things were. Yes. You think of them as long, but it's it's so small when you're comparing it to a 35, 40 year career. Yeah, uh, we're gonna like yeah, and I, I just and I just thought it was great advice because so many young people, myself included, just wanted to get a job, and so I was emulating demo reels of people who got the jobs that I wanted. Yeah, that was and, and I yeah, and it was like I was so terrified to impress other people um, that I I wasn't saying like i wasn't really thinking about the type of work the style of work that i really wanted to work in um and i think that's i think it's really important to kind of reiterate that like you will do this every day yeah. and you will be better at it if you care about it like you yeah. you will actually be a better artist for it so yeah i think it's great advice and the less likely you are to get burnt out on something that you know if you're doing something all day every day like i've been burnt out before and like legit burnt out and i was doing what i love to do so it's uh yeah it's really important to 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 find that thing and it's also okay if you don't find that thing until like a couple of years later like it's you know college is only four years and you're still really young and you still don't understand what like I didn't know what I wanted to do in college like I can't believe I graduated with a fashion degree like I I didn't use it at all like I did an internship and I was like this isn't for me I don't like this I spent way too much money and uh yeah. Now, now I've gone to the school of Google and like, and the school of Wes McDermott. I love telling him that because it's so true. Like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Um, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, watching blush every time. Every time you say that, he, he gets in his rosy cheeks. It's true. It's true. Everybody go to this, going to his school. <laughs> yeah. No, and that's and that's the and that's the way it goes. And like, and again, it's like you'll you'll see Wes's amazing tutorials, and you want to like mimic what he does. But it's like within that, and honestly, for me, like. 
finding my voice and my style of work just came through repetition, right? Like trying different things and like figuring out what resonates with you in a working style and like what you like you have to be you have to do you can't just like sit around thinking about oh what type of work do I want to make? You have to actually physically make work and then your style, you what you're passionate about kind of emerges from that. So it does. And that's with anything. That's great. Yeah. Um and see, that was the one you didn't, you said you weren't going to. I know, right? We spent the first should... time. Well, it's really important that you be happy, yes. honestly. It is. <laughs> it is. I mean, you can talk about like work-life balance all you want, but like yeah. if I spend 15 minutes having to keyframe animate something, I, 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 it's not like I would rather spend, you know, 10 hours doing look dev on a character than 10 minutes doing keyframe animation. And something. Really? So it's like. Yeah. Rigging, roto, any of that. Nope. I'm yeah. good on that. All of that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we number four. You're collaborating in a, in a, in a pipeline. You, you reckon you recommend people show their steps, show the T pose and how it was posed, show the design, then the sculpt, show the shader ball and how it was applied. Node graphs, UVs, breakdowns, turntables. These are all helpful, but do not forget to credit your crew. Yeah. So what are you looking for? Like when you're looking at someone's demo reel and you, you're seeing all this like auxiliary design stuff, like what, what is it? What is it telling you? Like as a, as somebody who hires people and things like that, like what, what is it? What does it tell you? So, all right, there's like one very specific example um, from uh, an old manager at How Special. Um, we were looking for a modeler and there were two really amazing candidates. And there was one that had all these just like beautifully posed, you know, they were just like beautiful, beautiful models. And then the other one was just showing a lot of T poses and a lot of wireframes and a lot of just like the technical stuff. And so me being uh, still kind of fresh in the industry and not knowing like what I was really looking at, I was like, oh, my God, look, these sculptures are beautiful. Like, let's hire this person. And he was like, he was like, do you see wireframes? Do you see T poses? Do you see any breakdowns in there? I don't. Oh, you're right. They probably don't know that stuff. And he's like, yeah, if this maybe were an internship or if it were like a junior modeler, like that would be okay. He's like, but I guarantee you they took this in ZBrush and they just did a bunch of Dynamesh and like posed it in some sort of way. And uh, it's, you can't use that in, in a pipeline. That's just, it's, it's pretty and there are certainly jobs out there where that is your job as a visual development modeler. And I know a couple of people who have done that before. And that's like their dream job is to do viz dev sculpting because you don't have to worry about the topology. You don't have to worry about blend shapes. You don't have to worry about any of that. But at the end of the day, it was like, okay, this other person is the better candidate because um, we right now, like we needed for that particular gig, like we just needed somebody to come in and hit the ground running. Like we didn't have the time to teach someone like what's a proper blend shape, what's proper topology on the face, like what, like all, all the stuff that you would learn already to make you, you know, to, to gain you that senior title. Um, so that, that was one thing that'll always stick with me for like, I want to see pipeline stuff. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, that person did come in and they knew their shit and they knew it. And they like we saw it in in the reel. We saw the pipe. You know, we saw the steps like, oh, OK. And they just they worked out and they were great for, you know, whatever that spot was. Um, so, I mean, anyway, like at, at the end of the day, like, again, you see a lot of shader balls. Like I saw so many shader balls at GDC that were beautiful, beautiful shader balls. But. I, like what in in this world is a ball that you're gonna put your shader on an apple an orange a basketball like those are cool but I want to see your concrete or your rock or your brick or your tile whatever whatever beautiful thing you're put it you're making put it somewhere put it on something put it on an object that you're actually going to put it on so I know you know what you're doing yeah and this goes back to your earlier point too um you know, you're talking about that person who didn't have the TPO stuff and didn't have the back. Like, maybe they did. Maybe they did do all that stuff, but they maybe. didn't tell you they did that stuff or they didn't show you. And yeah. so you have to be like really obvious, like hit, hit the, like really hit, hit them hard with, um, with what you've done, what this thing that they're looking at is yeah. and how it can apply to the job. Yeah. I mean, and it's the age old thing of like, 
having a breakdown reel versus having a, a show reel. Show reels are great. They're beautiful. They're eye candy. They show me what you worked on, but do they? Like, I don't know what you did in this. It takes yeah, like yeah. an entire village to make that one shot that you put in your show reel. And I think I've made one or two show reels, but every single reel after that, they, I've just always put my effort into making breakdown reels. And they're a little work. Yeah. They're a little work. They are, but like, and, and do them, do them fresh. Cause if you wait six months, you'll never want to go back yeah. there and you, you will, never. you will genuinely like forget what you did too. Yeah. So, um, so do them fresh and yeah. And I, I, I love to see that stuff. I also love to see, I always tell people to if you're doing anything stylized, especially throw in reference of what you were trying, like show your design process too, mm -hmm. because that is, um, because a lot of what look development, lighting, all that stuff is matching art direction. And so showing that you can match a style with your final work too, is always really important to me. So, um, I think, I think oh. all showing, yeah, do, do think about it like a, like a cooking show, like show every step in the process. Don't just show like the finished uh, piece at the end. That's great. Yeah. All right. Number number five. Sometimes oh the software. Gosh. Oh yeah. Sorry, we're only at five. We're at five. We're getting there. We're <laughs> doing this. Is a... You're great. No, this is great. This is incredible. Good. I love this. Sometimes the software you used is important. Many studios use proprietary tools, but adding the software icon somewhere in your project is a quick way to let the hiring manager know what they don't need to train you in. So this this is a pretty straightforward one, but yeah, um, it's it's small. Yeah, uh, it's hey, I have two people. I, like I have five minutes to make a decision, which I mean, in commercials, honestly, I had like thirty seconds to make a decision because everything was always due yesterday. Um, I have two candidates, and uh, they are both amazing candidates. They check all the boxes, but I have no idea. Um, what software this person uses and oh this person says they're using maya and arnold and mari and substance and you know whatever whatever it was at the time that i was looking for oh i don't need to train them in anything okay i don't have the time to train like commercial i mean like commercials they're like you know always like we had three weeks to make like a 30 second spot um which was pretty normal three four weeks so uh, most of the time I was doing, uh, freelance, like I was looking for freelancers. So that, that was just like a no brainer. That one, it's small, but that tiny little visual might just give you an edge up somewhere. Like that's you never great. know. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the, the, yeah, at the, at the bigger, and that, that's a lot about the individual job because at the bigger studios, it's all proprietary stuff and they, they generally don't really care that much about what software you use, but yeah. it doesn't. But if you just put it as like an icon in the corner, like that's doesn't, all you need to do, it's on, like a that's small great. little icon. And we, everybody knows what the icons are. It's not like, it's very rare where I'll see an icon. I'm like, I don't know what that is. I'm like we all, mm. all of us in the industry, at least know the icons to the software. <laughs> and if I don't, I'm like, Ooh, what is that that you know that I don't? So it's yeah. also maybe more intriguing. <laughs> um, but yeah, cool. Number six. If it takes you more than 60 seconds to explain a project, you might need to work on a better way of presenting your work. More visuals and text, recruiters and hiring managers aren't going to take the time to read your paragraphs. Um, and that's true of when you get the job too. Like your coworker, like learn to speak succinctly. And yeah, I'll let you, I'll let you say the thing. Oh yeah. man, that, yeah, that's a, that's also very true. <laughs> communication. Um, it shows your communication skills. Uh, we're all artists. Um, I think visuals, you know, we're all visual people and the more visuals you have to explain what you can do, the better. I'm I'm not going to read the paragraphs on your story and like this character does this, this and this to get here. And that's why it's dirty or you know, there's just there's there's uh, there's better ways of showing that kind of stuff. Um, I think where I might be going with that, too, is if there's um if you modeled a, a character that somebody else designed, just put the design there. And it shows me that you can model a character from the design, uh, like for, you know, one for one. Um, just stick it like in your reel, like have it pop up for like a second or something, you know, something. Just just as many visuals as you can uh, versus a lot of text. Um, too much text. I'm not going to read it. What is it? T, 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 T,
I need that version of your portfolio. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, and and I mean, you've been in rounds, I'm sure too. Where like I was always of the of the day when I would go into dailies and I'd show stuff, I would always just like not say anything. Um, and then there were some people like their work would show up. I don't know if this this was your experience. And they'd be like, okay, so in this one, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. Unless it was like something specific, I needed them to look at. Like, hey, I'm trying to get the blah blah blah. But like, if I'm getting final approval on something, like having the artist sitting right next to the director, like chirping in their ear about what they did, is not helpful. Like, it's not mm-hmm. your stuff should speak for itself. That That's is that that right there is gold as well. Yeah, yeah, if you need if you need to explain it, like there's there's one little nugget that um, I owe. It. Like I had I had an intern. She would do like a paint stroke and show it to me, and like, nope, not ready. Go back, address the note. Another paint stroke. Okay, I'm, I, I I think I'm done now. It's like, nope, not ready. Like, just go back and check out the notes. And then so eventually, I I kind of came up with this thing. Is she she taught me to do this with her? <laughs> Is there anything about your piece that you think I would say? What uh, what notes do you think I would give you? Go address those. And then come back and then then like I want you to be proud of it before you come and you show it to me. I don't want a whole explanation of the things you think you're going to do or things that like, you know, you might do down the road. Like, no, 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 no. I want like show me your best work. Of um, course, within the deadline. I love that. Like, <laughs> yeah. And when you when you work yeah, when you work with a, a mentor as you were in that situation or a lead or super director or whatever, you kind of start to get to know their style and what sure. they look for and like you try and slip your own styles in a little bit but match theirs like yeah. i always get called out for adding too much glow to bright things they're like mike and up <laughs> with the glow i was like come on man let this one go through just this one time <laughs> yeah we definitely all have that mine mine is is color i i'm, I'm like what? always adding saturation always yeah. my work i always add it and at, <laughs> at work it's like all right fine can i get 50 percent of it <laughs> All right, number seven. Here we go. If you're applying for multiple jobs, cater your resume to each one. Some bigger companies comb through looking for keywords from the job description. If they're missing, there's a chance they won't even see your amazing work. Okay, this is so important in the modern world of whatever those things that you, like you you have to upload your resume, but also like type out your resume, like whatever whatever that awful system is. It's explain important. what's yeah, it's so important to know because you will you'll get you'll get completely passed by. They won't even see you. So explain what's yeah. going on there with that stuff. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I think like I called myself a texture artist, and the job was look development artist. I might not even come up. It might be the same exact job, but I might not even come up. So I just made sure to uh, study the job description, and if there's keywords in there. Um, I would maybe put them in my cover letter or, you know, just make sure like you're, if you're applying for a job and you, you're applying for a model or job, don't call yourself a texture artist, like change your resume, change your cover letter, change whatever it is. And, uh, the job responsibilities don't copy paste them, but like put, put in your resume, those couple of keywords and they're, I, I think they're probably not as subjective as one might think. There's definitely going to be a couple of keywords in that job description that they're going to come through and look for. So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, I, I think what maybe 25% of the people get a job from doing that. But like this is, I don't know, I might, this might be uh, more towards the last tip here. But at the end of the day, it's like it's going to be somebody that you know that's probably going to get you the job anyway. But on the off chance that the recruiter actually has time that day and doesn't have anyone like on the docket already, just it it takes two seconds to to create a brand new resume. You just save as, change a couple of words, and then uh, upload that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 great because like you think of your your resume or your portfolio but like it's not that like you have skill sets that you can tailor to jobs so don't don't be afraid to make a couple of tabs or like a couple of page like if you're a modeler who also likes to do texturing like put together a portfolio that highlights your one skill and not the other one or like mm-hmm. make it uh, we I've, t- I've talked to people that have had you know i I'm, i know for myself i made the, the last time i got laid off 
and I was job hunting, I had a, I had a look, I, I put together, I think three or four different demo reels and, um, resumes based on the types of things that I liked. Um, and so I, yeah, definitely listen to Nikki. She knows, she's, she knows, she knows. Um, I mean, at least I think I do. I hope this can. is helpful. You don't know you've got a, I just noticed you've got a character behind you from Star, the, the Star Trek show that you that you worked on that was yeah. Well, that's, that, that, that I mean, I did work on the animated version of her, but she is my she's she my favorite. Made that toy. Nikki is a toy creator. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. All right, um, number eight. Wait, is this number eight? Yeah. Um, you might be able to get a gig with a few really solid props, but placing them in an environment that tells a story is going to make your work stand out. Bonus, add a fly a few rendered fly throughs so I can see how you know uh, how you, you so I can see you know how to do a proper spec map. That's a really cool one. So talk, yeah, just yeah. let's talk about that because the other part the other part's pretty straightforward. Talk to me about the spec map component of that. Like, what are you looking for um, in in that? Like, what is what is that getting? So you're gonna get that if your very cool prop is placed in an environment. If you have something that's shiny, metallic, or you have a piece of wood that might have a stain on it, but I want to see some weathering in there. I want to I want to know that you have a, a a good eye for that kind of stuff. And it's really hard. It's hard to light that kind of stuff as well. So um, your prop is amazing. If it's like on a gray background and it's you know, the psych is white and you just have some light going around it. I can see what it is, but I want to see that prop in the environment. I want to see that, you know, um, how like, like a prop, so a proper spec map or a proper buff map, like once you put it in the environment, it could look completely different. Uh, so being able to put that stuff in an environment and light it and then actually go around it, that's just, it's bonus. And I, Honestly, the that so that's bonus, but more of it I think also comes down to the story point. Like if you can, if you're putting like an old uh, collection of sorry, work from home woes. <laughs> Husband needed something. No worries. Um, <laughs> where was I? Uh, so yeah, if you if you could put something like an old. Uh, and something that's old vintage like in a shop that's uh some sort of old shop like it just tells me it tells a story like th that thing belongs there that thing is supposed to be there um i don't want to see a brand new set of headphones sitting in an antique shop like that's not what you know that's the opposite of what you want to do so just the fact that you like have that little like you're thinking about that stuff um i think maybe more like that's a specialty thing too like if you want to work at a big studio like pixar disney dreamworks like they're looking for that kind of stuff um but yeah so i had somebody at gdc that had this like amazing prop it was so cool um it was like okay so well but tell me about it like who made it where does it come from like you're looking for a job right like you got to stand out, right? Because I've seen a thousand amazing props today. Like, put that in an environment and tell me a story about it, and then go collaborate with somebody. You don't want to light it, have somebody else light it. You want to put a character in that, go find a character modeler. Like you graduated with a whole bunch of them, right? Like just yeah, do some sort of collaboration, and then that will show you pipeline stuff. Like this is all you know, it all comes around. Like there'll be pipeline steps in there, and there'll be uh, th th it's just. Yeah, it'll it'll all come together at the end of the day, and um, it'll just it'll make you stand out. Yeah, no, no, that, no, no notes. That's a great. That's great. No notes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So number nine. Um, this is a great one. I this is, like the question is, do I need a cover letter? Um, yeah. You know, and you say you're probably old school, but your answer is yes. And then put a little spin on it. You you recommend uh, top five reasons to hire me. Um, and then maybe cater them to the job description itself. Uh, be genuine, be specific, uh, but keep it short too. So yeah. talk like what what is you, like what do you, why do you recommend like like what is it about the cover letter that 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 you that appeals to you? Like what do you look for in those? Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. So I've seen so many like hot takes on this on Twitter or wherever. Uh, people saying like, oh, you don't need it anymore. Your work speaks for itself. Da, 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 da. Um. I want to know 
if there's if there are five things that you can tell me about yourself that I don't see in your work, um, you you like to problem solve or you think your communication skills are really amazing. Like, I don't know. Tell me about it. Tell, like, just give me those couple sentences each. And I can't believe I'm even telling this to people because I've been doing this for a really long time. And I feel like a lot of recruiters have said something to me about it. Like, that's actually really smart. Like, you, like it's not a whole, like, no one really, no one really reads the whole cover letter anymore. But if you're just giving me, like, five, like, great facts about yourself, this is more digestible. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah. And it's so, also like it, it, it rounds you out as a human being that they're going to be working yeah. with, right? It's, it just shows... Yeah. It shows a lot. That's that's that. I think that's really really cool advice. Yeah, I mean, and like I don't know, they don't all have to pertain to the job. Like I I have uh, like one of my fun facts is that me and my dog um, all like the same amount of cheese. Like we we you know we're cheese fiends, and so like anytime I'm eating cheese, he likes cheese. Like just, I don't know, put some like random fun fact in there about you that shows you a sense of humor and shows you're a human being and like shows that you're not just like all work all all, all day so i think um, that a lot of it too like i've seen ones that are like hey this project you like like say it's a dream job at you know whatever company and explain that to them like tell them about how what they did in the past inspired you to get to this point like you talked about going to the to the to the school of weston mcdermott like saying that in your application <laughs> to the substance team is like we all did it man like well, yeah totally she see she come like and it's um it's a very, it's a very real, it's very humanizing. It's like, it's a very cool process. I'm, I'm the same way with uh, thank you, uh, thank you messages after the interviews. Um, I'm the same yeah. way with it's like, like, oh, I mean, it doesn't like, like, do people really read those? Yeah, I totally read those. Oh my God. Yes, am I not going to like, am I not going to um, hire somebody who didn't send one? No, probably not. But like, it leaves a really good impression of you after the fact. Like, it's just, yeah. no, nobody is annoyed getting thanked. Like, nobody's no. like, oh my God. This person's being so grateful to my time. Like, how dare they? Yeah. Like, no, this is like, this is not a date where you're like waiting for the person to write you a message back. Like, just, just do it right away. Yeah. Like, right after yeah. the interview, thank them, say, yeah. you know, get, yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. Uh, we, so we've got to, we've got to number 10. Yes. The most important. Most important one. Most important of yeah. all. Network, network, network. The more, you get your work in front of the people, the better. Um, the uh, the more people you get your work in front of, the better. Let me make sure I say that right. Yeah. Collaboration will help, and finding a mentor is great. Nine times out of ten, you will get the job because you knew somebody. It's a sad truth, but it's a fact. So many many of us um, are not great at networking in like a GDC type of a setting. Um, like what what advice would you give to somebody who's like like how how do I you know I've been locked in uh, quarantine for the last four years. I don't know how to shake people's hands or to fist bump yeah. or touch their elbow or something. Yeah, uh, not that's totally me. I just run into that all the time. Like, how do you network at a at a conference like GDC? What advice would you give somebody? Um, so I'm human. Like, I, a couple of people came up to me and they're like, "Oh my God, you're the girl who did the chameleon!" Like, that's so cool for me to hear that somebody actually remembers that piece of work I did like how many years ago at this point. Uh, none of us bite. Nobody bites. Like no, no one's like, no one doesn't want to talk to you. It's, it's, uh, so, so all right, let me back up. Um, confidence is a skill set and you need a little bit of that to approach somebody at, at a GDC, you know, doing the network thing. Uh, I, personally have struggled with that so much just because this was a career change for me like I there were many tears many nights of like why the hell did I do this why what did I do to myself like I I went from being a, a senior graphic designer with with a team and like getting stuff done and I was really good at that job but I, just, I wasn't happy so at the end of the day, like, yeah, the, the whole confidence thing, like, was in the toilet for me for a really long time. And I found a mentor. I found a couple of mentors who I sought out because I saw their confidence was like, oh, my God, I want to be that when I grow up. And like, even one of them was like 10 years younger than me. And I was like, oh, my God, I want to. I She's amazing. Like, I, it, it, she she just she taught me. I mean, I was only. I only worked there for like a couple of months, but she just taught me how to be confident. 
Uh, there's so many talks online that are free that you can um, get, that you can watch and and try and gain that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I just you just kind of gotta go for it. Like the yeah. only way you're gonna learn to do that stuff is if you put yourself in those situations where you do not feel comfortable. Like you gotta learn from those situations. So. I mean, there was like a at GDC, someone did end up asking me if I would be their mentor. And I wasn't expecting that. And she had been through like a couple of other people. And and at the end of the day, she asked me that. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is really me? What? Oh. You know, so again, we don't bite. And like, I, I'm sure I've been around for a while. But even that kind of stuff is super humbling and the fact that she had the courage and the confidence to even ask is above and beyond, uh, above and beyond. So, um, yeah, it, it really does pay to just say hello to somebody like, and these conferences are so expensive. Like I get it. If you can't go, um, don't be weird in Instagram either. Like, don't DM me a thousand times. I've had that happen too, where, you know, it's like somebody who likes every single thing I post and then they'll comment on everything and then they start asking me questions. And like, I had one guy even ask me if I could go out with cough for coffee with him. And I was just like, I don't know you. Don't, so don't do that. <laughs> um, sure. But uh, yeah, it's, it really is important. Uh, don't, don't, don't be a dick either. Like I had one guy who was, I was working with at one job in Portland and I moved on to another job and the walls of like our cubicles, they had a, a hole at the top because it was just an apartment that they turned into a studio. So I was working and like the two owners were literally on the other side of this wall chatting with each other about like how much they wanted to pay him and that they were interviewing him and like, I'm going to come out and just so you guys know, <laughs> I know him really well. Um, I think you should hire him. He is fantastic and amazing, but like it's a small world. So uh, the fact that I knew him and that we had networked before and, and whatever, God, I, I probably didn't get him a job. And I'm sure it helped that I was like, yes, he's amazing. Hire him. Um, but yeah, just like don't. Don't be a dick. Uh, try and work on your confidence and just try try to be as genuine as possible with the connections that you want to make with the people you want to work with. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Nice. Like, just take advantage of the opportunities that are there. If there's yeah. um, events in your area, uh, go to those. If there's like like that GDC, I mean, I, I can speak for myself and I think I, I think we talked about this, but like during the portfolio review reviews was one of my favorite, if not my favorite part. It was like, other than just like hanging out with uh, people afterward and, and getting and getting food, yeah. um, which is always my favorite part of everything I do in life. But talking to students at GDC and seeing their work, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, thank you for taking the time. Like, thank you for having the strength and the courage to come talk to us about this. Like, this is I, yeah. this is why we're here. Like, yeah, if, if you see a portfolio review, go take advantage of it. If it's a job that you like a, uh, a job interview opportunity at one of these and you don't think that you have the skill set apply anyway. Um, you never know when one conversation will lead to another. It's like, well, yeah, you know, you're not best for this job, but we have this other opening coming up that yeah. I think you'd be great for. Like, oh, let me put you in contact with that person. So it only happens when you put yourself out there in uncomfortable ways um, with people. And like and like Nikki said, yeah, I mean, so the, the social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter is like the hardest way to make a connection with somebody. Yeah. But it, it is it is possible. I always say... If you're gonna if you're gonna reach out to me, like make it if if you're just like, hello, here's my demo reel, please review. I'm like, I don't I don't have time for that. But if you're like, hey, Nikki, I noticed that you made this um incredible dragon and, and I'm trying to make something with translucent wings too. Can you can you like take a look at this and tell me where I'm failing at it? Like if it's if it's like if it's if it's like why are you reaching out to me? And what what is it exactly that you want other than just like can you get me a job? And you're like, like, I've had people like, hey, can you get me a job at Pixar? And I'm like, no, like, I don't even work there, man. I, 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 that's a, I don't like, or how long does it take to get a job at Pixar? Like, I, I don't even know you, man. Like, I don't even, no. 
Um, so I think I think that 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 like asking a question is a bit of an art form and and learning how to approach people and understanding that, um, you know, everybody and everybody on like in, in general, all of us artists are incredibly approachable, kind, want to interact with you as best as we can. Um, but we're but like we're people, too. And like sometimes people are going through tough times and you might reach out to them at the wrong time and they just miss your message or like so totally. yeah, don't don't take it too personally. Just keep keep continuously putting yourself out there because it's the only way that you're going to make connections and the only way that you're going to yeah. get it. I mean, and like on a, on a last note, I think the, the most important part of this is yes, apply to the job, even though you think you're not ready for it, or you think your, uh, you know, your portfolio isn't up to par with all the people you think might be applying for it. Um, I'll even go as far like this is facts. This is not me being a you know a woman in animation. Like women don't apply. Like on on average, it's statistically women don't do not apply for something that they think that they're not good enough for. And um, again, it just goes back to the whole confidence thing. Like to apply anyway. Like you're gonna learn. It's a learning experience. Even if like you get the interview and you think you're not ready for it do the interview anyway like if you get an interview with somebody that like even if it might be a job that you might not even be like a thousand percent uh, excited for do the interview anyway you're gonna meet a couple of people uh, on the interview panel they might remember you for something down the road like every single little thing that happens to you along the way it's it, it's uh it's gonna be helpful like there's just gonna be that one little thing that's gonna be helpful down the road um yeah that yeah that's that that's and, and just just to reiterate like i've gotten that advice about um about female candidates um independently as well a guy i i used to uh work for at um the blue skin and do disney a guy named andrew milstein who i uh, learned a lot from my time working with him um told me that once because I, I was i had these job openings and there was someone internally I, I thought would be a great fit for the position. And I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm a little bummed she didn't apply. And he was like, why are you talking to me? Go tell her. Go tell her. Go tell her to apply. And yeah. I was like, yeah, but she should. He was like, no. He's like, you. He's like, in my experiences, every, you know, if you have six uh, requirements for a job, like need to know this, 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 and this, this software, this like, is like language, whatever. If he's like, in my experience. Women are more likely to look at that and be like, I only know five of those six things, so I don't think this is a good job fit for me. Oh, and he's like, he's like, every white dude will be like, see one thing that they can do and be like, oh, I'm the best candidate for this job. He's like, so yeah. make sure that you reach out to the people um, and know that you want them to apply for this position. Don't promise them anything because they could yeah. bomb it. But like, <laughs> <Of course. laughs> but 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 definitely like, and 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 so take that advice yourself. If even if, like, I just wrote a job description for jobs at Substance, and like, I was like. I don't even think I qualify for this job because <laughs> it's like, because <laughs> there are things in there. So just, just know that those are um, the ideal candidate that they're writing there. That's not going to like, th those don't exist. So apply yourself no. and get yourself out there. Yeah. They don't exist. Okay. None of yes. that. Not, that's, I mean, they're unicorns. Like we, we reach for the stars when we want to hire somebody and then, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 10 network, network, network. That's, ten, that's, that's it. Important. We did the 10 out of 10. That's it. That's it. I mean, that's not it, but that's it for yeah. now. <laughs> that's it for now. That's it for now. We, we, got, we got we got stuff we got to do. <laughs> I got I, I, I think I can go. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much, Nikki, for uh, sharing your advice and your incredible um, knowledge on this matter. Like I said, it's a pleasure to work with you and yeah. uh, to collaborate with you all the time. And it's very cool to just like sit down and pick your brain on this stuff. And I hope, um, I hope, I hope you found this useful. For those uh, listening that are at this point, thank you for listening all the way through. Um, like I said, I won't, you know, I don't know if we'll continue doing these. I definitely won't be always doing them from my backyard. So uh, thanks for riding along for any uh, stray noises or anything that's popped up. Um, Nikki, thank you once again. And I don't know how to end this without saying genuinely, without turning this whole thing off. So genuinely, Nikki, it's great talking to you. I will talk to you again soon. <laughs> Did and, it all uh, of that. Yeah. All of that. All right, buddy. <laughs> all right. See you soon. All right. Have a good day, everyone. All right. Bye. Bye.